Welcome back. This is an important story. We are highlighting a new potential game changer in the fight against COVID. Brand new science coming out of UC Berkeley. A team there is developing a nasal spray, not a shot, that can prevent COVID infections. And here's the most important part. It appears to work against all current variants and all future variants to come. While the vaccines we've been using have largely targeted the spike protein you see there on the outside of the virus, you've probably heard about this concept before. Well, this new nasal spray focuses on the heart of the virus instead. And we're so glad to be joined by researcher and Professor Anders Nahr. His team created this nasal spray. Thank you so much for being here tonight. Thanks, Natasha. Thanks for having me. Can you briefly explain to us how can this nasal spray be effective against all mutations of COVID, even the ones that haven't sprung up yet? Right. Uh, maybe I should backtrack a little bit and explain how this works and how it's different from, uh, again, from the other variants. Uh, no, the treatments rather. So this virus um, it's kind of like a sphere like this and it has these protrusions, as you mentioned, the spike protein. That's the target of uh, vaccines and monoclonal antibodies. We're actually targeting a different portion of the virus, the cargo of the virus. This is uh, um, the viral RNA. That's, the virus is basically like a Trojan horse. It injects this RNA into the cell and this is what we're actually targeting. This is the template for making new copies of the virus. So the virus uses this to turn the uh, cell that it infects into its personal copy machine. And it really requires uh, this end of, of the uh, viral RNA strand to for the uh, copy machine to work effectively. And so we're targeting this with something called uh, antisense therapeutics or ASO for short. Um, it binds to the viral RNA and prevents this uh, uh, loop from forming and thereby jamming the viral copy machine. I mean, so Anders, first of all, I, I certainly appreciate yeah. the visual aids. That's really helpful. And, and I think just for lay people, I, I understand we see these spike proteins on the outside and it's been so troublesome because all these different variants keep popping up. The spike proteins keep changing. But if we can actually affect what's going on underneath and inside that main gray part of that uh, visual aid that you're showing us. That's sort of the key here, right? And I think this is so That's exciting, right. Anders, because you know there's been a feeling of powerlessness around trying to get ahead of this virus. Mm -hmm. uh, and so many questions about, you know, is my booster, is my vaccine gonna protect me from Omicron and then BA4 and then BA5, and it just feels endless. If this bears out in the next phase of testing, is the hope that a nasal spray like this could actually help us end COVID? Yeah, that's the hope indeed. So we think that because it's so stable, uh, it's really easy to manufacture and it's actually stable at room temperature. It can be delivered in salt water and saline. And we think we can formulate it into nasal spray or an inhaler and thereby um, affect the pandemic. Um, you can basically get this to people where there is no refrigeration or freezing capacity like the third world and uh, perhaps vaccine hesitant individuals might be more comfortable with a nasal spray that's uh, simply administered maybe once a day or even once a week. I absolutely hear you. And I, I mean, I want to circle back on the refrigeration issue because, you know, I remember when mass vaccinations were happening at sports centers and parking mm -hmm. lots and, and healthcare workers were actually throwing away vials of vaccine at the end of the day because of the refrigeration issue. Can you talk about what right. this means for our ability to disseminate it and to potentially take this around the world? Right. So again, because it's not uh, needing refrigeration, you can simply package it into something like an allergy spray. You could ship it around the planet and you wouldn't have to store it in the refrigerator uh, or in a freezer like the vaccines and monoclonal antibodies. And it could actually work together with, with vaccines and monoclonals as well as with Paxlovid. Are there any side effects that you're seeing so far? So we've tested this uh, quite extensively in mice and hamsters. Uh, which are the go-to organisms for laboratory research, and we haven't seen any adverse effects whatsoever. Now, uh, I would like to emphasize that this is still uh, at the end of the research phase. The next is actually animal trials and trials in humans to make sure it's safe. And after that, we can test to ensure efficacy in humans. So we're probably uh, a year or two away from actually having this deployed if everything goes well. I hear that the timeline uh, quoted before is that it, the next step is to take it to the FDA for human trials. And if things go That's as right. predicted, it could be available as soon as fall of next year. Is, is that still the timeline? 
And that's what we're hoping, but that's a very aggressive timeline. Now we need some uh, uh, muscle behind it, if you will, some, some uh, people putting the shoulder to the effort like Big Pharma or Big Biotech. The FDA has to be on board. Ideally, the U.S. government, like for uh, uh, the warp, warp speed uh, effort, put some muscle behind it as well. And lastly, you know, the nasal spray, it doesn't just prevent COVID. If one already has COVID, it can actually reduce symptoms as well. Is that right? Yeah, that's what we saw in the animal trials, both in mice and in hamsters. It was uh, quite efficacious. Even um, a day after, uh, with a very high dose of virus, we could still see efficacy. Anders, uh, this is being called a game changer. Would you agree with that? Well, <laughs> there are a lot of steps that still need to happen, but if everything pans out the way we envision, it could be potential. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.